And it's not just Democrats relentlessly going after the president's his agenda. Liberals in the media have also reached another new low. In response to President Trump's emphasis on saying Merry Christmas, Newsweek on Christmas Eve published an article entitled, and I quote, how Trump and the Nazis stole Christmas to promote white nationalism. And listen to what CNN's Don Lemon recently said about the president's use of the very phrase, Merry Christmas. And this is a line that we have heard from Donald Trump many, many... Why does he continue? This is a dog whistle to the base, because no one uh -huh. has ever stopped saying Merry Christmas. You know, I forgot to bring my dog whistle. I usually have that on my radio show to blow whenever I hear that phrase. Joining us now with reactions, son of the late Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia and co-editor of the New York Times best-selling book, Scalia Speaks, Chris Scalia, and also joining us, Fox News Radio's Todd Starnes and author and attorney Danielle McLaughlin. Danielle, I, I've got to go to you first on this. Uh, as an attorney, <laughs> make the case for impeachment of the president. A president can be uh, impeached for high crimes and misdemeanors. And as you and I both know, David, it's a political process, not a legal process. So, But president it requires a chargeable crime. Requires Here in the United crime, States, it requires that. A high crime or a misdemeanor. It has become, I think, the public expects the, the level of proof that you would see in a criminal offense. We need half of the House. We need two-thirds of the Senate. Even if the Democrats take back the House in 2018, I actually still think there's a pretty low chance of it happening. Todd, yeah, look, the media's impeached him already, haven't they? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, Don, Len Don Lemon, who I've known for years, says it's a dog whistle. I, again, yeah. you know, dogs uh, are barking everywhere. So let me say something about Don Lemon. And, and quite frankly, CNN, their entire network is a dog whistle for race-baiting anti-Trump bigots. I mean, it's 24-7. They really believe that Merry Christmas is, is a dog whistle. It makes me wonder what they think the, the words ho, ho, ho would be code for. But look, I want to go to this idea that that Christmas is somehow you know inclusive is that is that really true because you don't hear them talking about well Ramadan really needs to be more inclusive this really is not about inclusivity uh, David this is about marginalizing Christianity so when President Trump said the words we're gonna we're gonna start saying Merry Christmas again what he was trying to tell people was you know what I understand the true meaning of Christmas Jesus is the reason for the season that was the message that the president was trying to convey all right, Chris, let's bring you in on this because your father, a strict constructionist, a man who stood for the Constitution, defended the Constitution, uh, weighed in often on First Amendment issues, on constitutional issues. I, you know, it's, it's a tough question to say what would he say, but mm -hmm. Scalia speaks, now the son of Scalia. Your take on this. Well, I think, you know, as you said, uh, I'm not sure exactly what he would say about the war on Christmas in particular, but in Scalia's speaks, uh, there are a number of speeches in which he expresses serious concern about a narrowing space for public expression of religion. As my father saw it, he, he was an originalist, and he believed that the Constitution should be interpreted according to its original public meaning. And it was pretty clear to him that uh, according to that original public meaning and, and tradition, and early practices in America that it was totally okay for politicians and people in the public square to make relig religious statements and expressions. Uh, and my father was concerned that that understanding was changing and the room for public uh, for expressions of religion in the public square was getting smaller and smaller in no small part because of the Supreme Court's own opinions with which he often disagreed on the, in, in that front. All right, so Danielle, you know, looking at this from what uh, Chris just said, and, you know, whether you like the speech or don't like the speech, whether it's tweeted a certain way or offensive to some, uh, this is part of what makes America great, that hate is protection speech, yes. offensive speech or offense is not required or like, but does, that doesn't rise to impeachment of a president. It may be an impeachment of character, according to some who disagree with him, but the Democrats are not making a good case here the way I see it. 
No, and I, you know, I know that you're a supporter of, of the president, and many for many po people who are, this is just political. But I'm a supporter noise. of the Constitution. No, first. and I absolutely and am statements as well. that violate the principles of which the Constitution stands and exists and is written for. Uh, I think that's beneath, or I would think it would be beneath mm -hmm. our political, in this case, the president's opponents in off in Washington. Sure, you know, the only speech actually that the president could get impeached for is obstruction of justice. If there was a conversation that he had to shut down an investigation into him or others associated with the Russia investigation, that is actually speech that is not protected under the Constitution. So that is fundamentally speech that could be impeachable. All right, Todd, you know, you podcast. I love your podcast, by the way. Thank you. And, and you talk about this a lot. Free speech, Todd. And you and I have done it on my show, on your shows. I don't care what it is. I don't want to shut down anyone's right to do it, whether I agree or not. Is the left effectively shutting down free speech. Did free speech die at Berkeley in 2017? You know, I think it did. And we're in a very dangerous place in this country right now, David, because now the left says any speech we disagree with, well, we're going to make that hate speech. You know, I want to go back to this, uh, this idea that the Democrats are going to do whatever it takes to impeach uh, the president. I believe that. We know that under the Obama administration, they weaponized the Internal Revenue Service. They weaponized the Department of Education. They investigated... And, and James Rosen, Cheryl Atkinson. That's right. I mean, this was an administration and a government going after individuals. They went after Billy Graham, America's pastor, for crying out loud. So do I think it's possible that they may have weaponized the FBI in, in addition to all of that? Absolutely, I do. All right, Chris, uh, back to you. And I, and I want to bring something into this as a point of personal pride that I got to meet your father over a number of times. I think we have a picture of the two of us together at the White House Correspondents' wow. Dinner. And, you know, the Scalia Speaks, when the book came out, a great way to kind of put his voice into the conversation. Uh, just give you a few seconds here to talk about that. It's a collection that my, of speeches that my father delivered over the course of his career. Uh, we, my co-editor Ed Whalen and I, really wanted to make this interesting and accessible to every, really every American interested in the law or in my father, not just lawyers or legal scholars. So there are plenty of speeches about the law, but there are speeches about sports, about hunting, um, about the, the values that Americans hold dear, about, uh, um, about the, what makes an American, what, uh, that, that it's about uh, whole, sharing certain values and beliefs in freedom and equality. Uh, so it's a really, it gives a picture of my, my father as a man in full, not just a justice. All right, it makes Chris, i got to stop Christmas you there because we're up against a hard break. But thank you, Danielle, Todd. Great to see you. 